So today we are going to learn how to animate a 3D camera, how to make it so that your computer won't explode, how to do it the most efficient way so it takes the least amount of time. And then let's get started. Right here I have already my song. Now let's first mark where the lyrics should be. When listening to this, make sure that you place the markers to the words and not to the beats. Sometimes the waveform can be helpful, but sometimes it's a bit distracting because these peaks are not always the words. And you have to edit on the timeline, not on the clip, otherwise you won't be able to see it in future. And sometimes you can also see a pattern. For example, here I notice that the words are just on rhythm, so they always have the same distance. And I'm choosing different colors here just because it makes it easier later in Fusion to tell which marker I made for which word. Now let's add a Fusion composition. Go into Fusion. Okay, let's first add the notes that we need. So let's add a camera, a renderer 3D, image plane and a X 2D and a merge note. And let's just connect them like that. To go over optimization really quick, in this uh, renderer node, make sure that your renderer type is set from software to hardware renderer. Uh, disable all the anti-aliasing and disable high quality and motion blur. Okay, so next let's talk about the camera. The camera is what we are going to animate. The focal length plays a big part on how the image will look. If you have a bigger number here, as you can see, the camera will be more zoomed in. And if we make it bigger, it will have a wider view. A more zoomed in camera with a higher focal length will have less perspective distortion, which looks a bit more cinematic. And if we bring it down, it looks a bit more dynamic, a bit more playful, basically like an ultra wide lens. For this, I'm going to pick 15. Let's also move our camera back a bit, just so we can see what's going on. And now let's use the right viewer to preview what we are rendering with the renderer. And let's use the left viewer to preview the scene. And that's also just for optimization. Let's just view this without the text. So every image plane is made out of a lot of subdivisions. The more subdivisions, the more detail an object has. But because we are just using a flat plane, we don't need any detail. So we can just bring down the subdivisions. So now let's disable wireframe again. And you can also set this as a default if you want. Just right click settings, save default. And you could also do that with the camera or with the renderer if you want to. Now you can press style as the text, choose a different font, see what you like. And you can also obviously change this later. We will first create all the text that we need so that we then can figure out in our head what camera movement you could make. So first I'm going to copy all these just so we have all the words. And another thing, if you don't have sound and fusion like me right now, then um, just add a media in mode, go to audio and click purge audio cache. And now you have the audio. But as you can see, the audio is a bit delayed and it's glitching a bit. I wouldn't rely on it. If you sing, use these markers right here. And also, while we are in the spline, um, the way I brought them up is by clicking my mouse button. You can do this really easily just by pulling up your macro mouse software. For me, this is Logitech G Hub. And then you just find, for example, your thumb button and you remap it to F8, which is the default for a spline. So now when I'm pressing the thumb button, it's activating F8, which opens the spline. And that makes it really fast to just switch between nodes and spline. And I can always have these spline full view and also another thing with the spline while we are in it let's also enable show only select tool this is going to make it easier when we stack animations later on so it doesn't get messy in here and also you can go to options make sure that enable marker grab is disabled now let's continue okay so let's move this off to the side and now let's continue with the text so let's just type it here Uh, one image playing too much and let's also rename the text so it's easier to tell which one is for which you can also select them like that and hit f2 and then it will go through them this way you won't have to click f2 on every single one so now let's just brainstorm a bit and position all these elements i want the her text to be in the front because it has to show up first and then let me move the love text a bit back let me position it here Mm. And by the way, I'm always selecting the image plane that I want to move, because if I don't do that, I might accidentally move another thing that I don't want to move. So select this image plane, the sweet one, and move it back. Now we have a 3D scene. Now you could imagine already the camera movement it goes maybe from here to here. 
pretty here. Um, also make sure that you don't move these too far apart from each other. To make the movement smoother, just bring them a bit closer to each other. Now let's start animating. The way we are going to do this is using Transform 3Ds. Compress Shift Space and type in 3XF, which is the abbreviation for the node, so that you don't have to type in Transform 3D every time. And now let's rename that to our first word. Uh, oh no, we can't do that, because Fusion doesn't let you have the same name twice. So in this case, I'm just going to make it no capital letters. And yeah, let's animate the first letter. So open the spline while you have the her node selected. The way that you animate a 3D camera is you just make keyframes on all the parameters that you might want to animate. And then you go forward in time. I always like to do to the next marker. And then you make sure that these both keyframes align so that the marker or the word that you want to sync to is in the middle between them. And if this happens, don't worry, just press shift while moving the keyframe and it will stay locked to the x-axis. Um, so now change the starting position and let's move it a bit out so it starts a bit out. Let's also maybe add a bit of rotation so it pans up like that. Generally if you have a camera movement it's good to have the camera move kind of in the same direction. Don't make it move suddenly to the side. Try to transition between a different movement angles. So if I would want to animate the camera to the side I would maybe put it like here and then have like a smooth curve but I wouldn't put the suite like here because then it's like straight and then directly to the right, which would look a bit abrupt. Okay, now let's go back to the her, um, transform and let's make the graph. Just highlight all the keyframes and press S. So we don't really need a complicated graph, just use this S graph and then hit T. This is going to bring up this ease menu. You can really easily change the length of the handles. 50 is going to be when the handle is in the middle. And if these numbers don't line up, then just select the keyframes again. Um, and refresh the menu. So now let's make sure that the steepest point of our graph where the most movement will happen is over the sinking point. And let's also make them not too sharp. By sharp I mean like this because we have relatively fast movements here and if we make it too sharp then the movement will look really jittery. Try to keep the graphs a bit looser and if it still looks like a bit jittery then you can even select them hit this uh, shape box right here and move them even further apart. But I think for this something like here would be good and yeah, make sure that this point aligns with the marker. Now let's add the next transform. Always make sure that you add it between the camera and the last transform. This makes it so that the pivot of the camera is always aligned. Now the next word is la, so let's rename it. And let's also go into our graphs again. It's again keyframe, so that the point is in between the keyframes. It doesn't have to be perfectly in the middle by the way. We just have to make sure that the steepest point of the graph is exactly in the middle right here. Now we align the last keyframe where the camera should move. Let's just move it here. We can also resize uh, this later because right now it's a bit too big. You can also add a bit of rotation. It's just going to make it more natural because no camera moves like a train. It always has uh, like a bit of rotation to it. Then select the keyframes again, hit S, make them a bit bigger. Now make sure again that the steepest point of the graph aligns with the marker. And let's not make it too steep. And uh, now let's add the next one. Let's add it here, rename it, put the spine again, set keyframes on the last marker, then oh, I forgot some keyframes. Again, the point that we want to sync to is between these two keyframes. And let's go to this one and move the camera again where it should move. And let's rotate it a bit maybe, a bit like that, a bit a bit closer maybe. And again hit S. So let's align the steepest point. Let's add the last transform. Let's also rename this one to Sweet, so we know which one it is. Open the spline window, make our keyframes. In this case, I would also go above this keyframe, just because it makes it easier. Then you can choose your position again, where you want to position the camera, and rotate it again a bit. Maybe a bit like that, and then move it down a bit. Okay. That was maybe a bit too much. If you want to really align it, you can also click on this viewer and then hit Ctrl G. This is going to bring up this alignment grid. Now let's select our keyframes again. Hit S, um, Ctrl F to resize them. Let's refresh the T menu. Make sure our graph is aligned again. Okay. 
Uh, now let's see what it looks like. So, the walls definitely need to be smaller, and maybe we can also tweak the rotation a bit. So let's just go into our 3D view right here and make it really big, because we are just going to be working using the 3D controls. So let's um, rescale this one a bit. Um, this one maybe also a bit smaller. This one could also have a bit different rotation maybe. And this one definitely needs to be a bit smaller. No, not, not too much. Let's bring it a bit to the right and rotate it a bit just to make it look a bit more interesting. On the last one, let's make it a bit smaller and let's maybe rotate it a bit. Um, let's actually bring it back a bit and have our animation be a bit further. So let's go to our sweet animation and let's just bring the Z a bit further. I think the graph is still right, so... And I think uh, that's good for now. Another thing you can do is add particles. Particles also have a benefit, which is we give the viewer more orientation points to understand the 3D movement, and that can make it look better. Let's just go to our P-emitter, to the controls tab. Let's keyframe the number on the first frame to a higher number, for example, 500. This is how many particles will be in the scene. Then go to the next frame, keyframe it to zero, so that only on the first frame, 500 particles will spawn, and then no more particles will spawn so that there are going to be 500 particles throughout the whole timeline. Next thing is, this right here is the particle region where the particles will spawn. It's a bit small, we could move it a bit more in the center. And let's also make it bigger, maybe like 3. And let's also go to the style tab and select blob, which is going to give them a soft rounded shape. Let's make them a bit smaller, give them some size variance maybe. Sometimes there are these glitches right here in the 3D viewer where the particle cuts out the text. This is just because the transparency algorithm that's used right now is optimized for speed and not to look good. So if we change it to quick sort, you can see it's fixed, but we don't really need it for the 3D viewer. I just wanted to show you there because it's easier to see. But where we really need it is on the renderer. So let's go to transparency and change it to quick sort. Now let's give the words some animation. Click on the text that we want to animate, in this case the word her, which was this marker. So let's keyframe the size right there and I will give it a ease in animation like this. It goes from 0 to the number that I set up here, so it's like a scale up basically. Then go to our next text, go to where the word is, keyframe to 0, highlight them, make the same graph again, go to the next marker and to the next word, the keyframes to 0 this graph again. Could probably make a better graph, but for now I think this is alright. And to zero. And let's make the same animation. Now it should look something like this. And I would recommend you to tweak this movement until you are really happy with it, because what we are going to do next is going to take a lot of time. So make sure that the movement is really good. You can also, if you want to preview it, this node right here, press um, 1, so it's not viewing that anymore. You can enable playback resolution and set it to quarter if you have big legs. So now let's prepare it for our semi-final render, so we can then add some other effects like glow. Now let's enable all the anti aliases again. Another thing we can do before that, go to the accumulation effects and enable them. Let's add some depth of field. First of all, set the quality down, just so when we're working with it, it's a bit easier to tell. And let's bring the amount down a bit, just so we can tell enough what's happening. To change where the depth of field will be focusing, let's go to the camera and use the focal plane. And let's just keyframe it so the focus is always where we want it. I think that's good enough. We will bring the amount down a lot anyway, because with a lower amount you can get away with less quality and I just want to render this a bit quicker. It's still noticeable on these like really close-ups. But the quality doesn't have to be super good, because on this motion it's going to be really motion blurred anyway. It doesn't really matter that much. Now let's look at the motion blur settings. So go to the settings tab, enable motion blur, and quality is how many steps the motion blur will have, and shutter angle is how strong it will be. So because this is a really fast movement, you also have to be careful that you don't add too much, because then that will result in unreadable text. So let's actually set it down a bit to 100, and the quality, I would always set that as high as possible for you, just because otherwise you might see steps and it will look bad. So I would go above 10, for this I would choose 15, and then that's in 
enable the anti-aliasing again. Now let's go back to the edit page. Make sure we have playback resolution disabled because otherwise the cache can get bugs. Now let's go to the deliver page. The reason why we want to cache in the deliver page is because this page is optimized to view your project before you render it. If you don't have cache enabled, go to render cache and select smart. Now let's go to the part that needs caching and let's click play. Okay, so now let's add an adjustment clip. Make sure that you don't move it into this because if you move it uh, through the fusion composition, all the cache will be lost and it will do all the cache again. Could even lock the track maybe just to make it sure. Now let's do the other effects. Let's uh, choose checker underlay so you can see uh, the clip better. First add some lens distortion. For this I will choose the resolve lens distortion, not the fusion one. Um, you can identify them by their logo. The fusion tools were always just the icon, but the resolve tools always have a rectangle around it. The lens blur is a resolve tool for example, lens flare, lens reflections. The resolve tool just means that Blackmagic Design added it when fusion was already integrated into resolve and the resolve tools are usually just more optimized and run a bit faster. So let's add the lens distortion and let's just select a nice lens distortion. The cool thing is we can also use this node here directly for the chromatic aberration. So just uncheck this and now we have red, green and blue distortion separately to get our um, chromatic aberration effect. Don't make it too strong but just really subtle. I would always look at the edges of the frame to tell how it looks. 